Hello everybody, my name is Alex Matveev and I'm developer of PES StarProf software uh, that is developed under the brand PES Suite. Uh, in this seminar we will talk about several ASME B411 and B411-3 issues needed to know for pipe stress engineers. The first issue is in B411 code and it is related to the stresses due to sustained loads. Let's check this equation from the code uh, and we have a look at it. We will see that it includes the axle stress from the pressure and it includes the bending stress from the moment, from the bending moment. But it doesn't include the stress caused by axle force. The same issue with occasional loads. It doesn't include the axle load stresses. Now let's check this model. For example, we have very tall riser, very, very tall pipe, uh, with a great weight. Um, in this model we will have very high axle force and the stress caused by this axle force will be very high, but uh, ask me B311 code, ignore this stress and doesn't take it into account. So let's check this model using the StarProf software. Here you can see the original code stress calculated by original code equation and this stress is very low. But if we will use this option to add the axle and torsion stresses into the uh, bending, uh, bending stress calculation, uh, sustained stress calculation, sorry, uh, it is SL with asterisk, you will see that the stresses are much greater than allowable values. How does this stress calculate it? The SL with the asterisk is calculated according to the equation similar to ASME B413 code and it is include the axle force stress and torsion moment stress. And for this model the difference is significant. If it doesn't take into account the axle force the stress will be very low, but if we will take into account the axle force, the stress will become greater than allowable. So, in real system, we will have the failure here, but according to the code, it's okay and you will not see any problem. The another issue is uh, the same reason, but it's related to the expansion range stress. In ASME B311 code, it uh, takes into account only bending moment. It doesn't take into account the axle force, doesn't take into account the torsion moments, only bending moment. So, if you will create the design like this, the pipe that is restrained between two anchors, the code stress will be zero. The stress will be zero, because the bending moment is zero in this model. But the real, the real stress range will be huge and it will be greater than allowable, because of very high axle force. So in this case you need to include the axle force stress and torsion stress too. You need to check this option in StarProf and software will automatically include uh, the stresses from axle force and torsion moment into the stress calculation. And sometimes even experienced piping designer can make a mistake. If you have very big model, you can miss uh, the wrong design when some part of the piping is restrained between two anchors. Now let me show you 
how to check this in the software. I will create a simple model. I will use ask me B31 one code. The ambient temperature will be zero. Now I create the pipe. For example, three meters. This is diameter, wall thickness, the material. The pressure will be zero. The temperature will be 150 degrees. And let's add the fluid date. Here is the pipe. Now I will add the anchors here. First anchor and second anchor. And now let's run analysis. Run analysis. And now let's check stresses in our system. And we see that everything is very, very good. Everything is okay. The sustained stress is very low. It, uh, it's much lower than allowable stress. It is just, the, the stress ratio is just 2%. So the same with the expansion stress. Expansion stress is zero and allowable stress is very high. So we don't have any problem with this model. So we can think that this design is okay, but now let's open the project settings and select add the axial force and torsional stress <clears throat> now run analysis again and now we see that we have the problem open the stress table and now you can see this is the stress table without axial force and this is including the axial force and we can see that stresses the actual stresses are very high so let's check the value of the stress you can see that it is calculated like axial force divided by the pipe cross-section area and it is used in this equation and the final result is very high stress it's much greater than allowable and here is the allowable stress here is the allowable stress this is number of cycles the f factor hot allowable cold allowable and this is the final allow allowable stress and our stress calculated with additional stress from axial force is greater than allowable stress but if we will use the original original code stress it will be zero because there is no axial force another issue is in ask me before the one free code uh, to explain this problem we need firstly check the uh, expansion range calculation in another code in ASME B31 one code here is that equation this is expansion range stress that equal to the bending moment divided by section modulus and multiplied by the stress intensification factor the section model is calculated using this equation that depends on the effective branch wall thickness. And effective branch wall thickness is the minimum value of the wall thickness of the pipe matching to the header and uh, wall thickness of the pipe matching to the branch multiplied by stress intensification factors. Um, where did this equation come from? The explanation is very simple. It is very simple. Uh, we need to check two points of the T connection 
The first point is the intersection point between the branch and the header and the second point is on the branch. Here is the second point. This is point 2 and this is point 1. So here we have the stress intensification factor and we use the wall thickness of the pipe matching header. And in this situation we use uh, the wall thickness of the pipe matching branch and we don't use the stress intensification factor. We can convert this situation to the simpler using the effective wall thickness. Uh, that is minimum value from TH and I multiplied by TB. The same idea is used for sustained stress, but here they use another value. It's uh, 0.75 multiplied by stress intensification factor. And in this case, this equation is simplified to the following equations. And everything is correct here. The effective uh, wall thickness is calculated using the 0 0.75 multiplied by stress intensification factor. It's, everything is correct in ASME B311 code. But now let's check the ASME B311 free code. If we will follow the same logic, we need to use uh, we need to check stresses in two points, the first point on the branch and the second point is intersection point between two pipes. Here we should use the stress intensification factors and as this is <coughs> the uh, sustained stresses, the stress intensification factors should be multiplied by 0 0.75. And for the branch we should not multiply the bending moments uh, by the stress intensification factors. Here we use the TB and here we use the TH. But let's check the original code equations. It is following. And now if we will substitute the effective wall thickness intersection modules and then substitute section modules in the bend and stress calculation, uh, bend and stress equation, uh, we will get this formula. Now let's compare the, the correct equation with the equation that we get now we can see that stresses in the intersection point between pipe and uh, between header and branch are correct. This value and this value is a Q. It is correct. But if we will check the second point on the branch, we will see that the code stresses are 25% lower when it should be. So if the outplane bending moment is zero, you can see that we underestimated the stresses by 25%. If we will assume that in-plane bending moment is zero and let's take the Stress, outplane stress intensification factor equal to 1.4. Uh, we will underestimate the bending stress by 20%. How to correct this? We can substitute the, the correct bending stress formula into the equation and replace the original code equation by this, uh, by this uh, correct equation 
where we calculate the stresses in two points in branch and in the intersection point and also we we should use the uh, accurate value of header section models and branch section models but unfortunately these corrections can be made in the software because ask me before on free code revision needed uh, so we can only recommend to to use the ask me b 31 j code that contain more accurate stress intensification factor values uh, it is very easy you need just to select this option in past star prof uh, project settings and after that star prof will automatically uh, take into account the stress intensification factors according to ASME B31J and also it will use the accurate real uh, section models for header and for branch. And also StarProf will automatically convert all the T's in your model uh, to the more accurate model with the rigid element with uh, length equal to the half of diameter of header and automatically it will add the flexibilities on the branch and flexibilities on the header so Starprof has two layer uh, model uh, the first layer is the model that you can see that the software user can see like this but after you push the button run analysis, StarProf will automatically convert the original uh, T's into the complex T model that takes into account the flexibilities of the header, the flexibility of the branch. It will automatically add the rigid element and also StarProf automatically will take into account the greater thickness of the header and greater thickness of the branch if you will specify the T height and T length it will be done automatically but even if you will not select this option if you will not select the ask me before one J star prof will uh, continue modeling the T's using the rigid element because it is important uh, to exclude the unnecessary flexibility of the branch from the model. So StarProf will always use the rigid element here. And uh, the model will become more rigid than uh, if we model it with using just a connection between two pipes. The header pipe and branch pipe. So this model is more correct with rigid element. Uh, thank you for your attention. See you on next seminar. Thank you.